Hello everyone, my name is Lori Anderson, contributor for FreedomOutfest.com, as well as host for Resurrect the Republic RTR Truth radio broadcast. Many of my followers already know that I am trying to keep up on as many cases as possible that has anything to do with the takings clause or the imminent domain of where the federal government or state governments are trying to take individual personal property via the takings clause for eminent domain, which of course leads right straight into the UN Agenda 21 issue that has been going on for a very long time. So I wanted to make you aware of a case that maybe you haven't heard of. July 24th of 2017, the Cato Institute reported in their blog, quote, when a group of 20 Michigan landowners contested the Fed's use of eminent domain, they asked for a jury trial. By doing so, they challenged a provision of the Tucker Act that says suits against the government for over $10,000 must be brought in the Court of Federal Claims, a legislative tribunal rather than an Article III court. This goes against the Seventh Amendment's guarantee of a right to a trial by jury, argued the landowners. The district court in Michigan sided with the government, however, and dismissed the case for lack of jurisdiction, holding that Congress is within its powers to override the Seventh Amendment's guarantee of the right to jury trial when the federal government is the defendant because of, quote-unquote, sovereign immunity. The district court effectively shielded the government from constitutional checks and balances that protect individuals' property rights, which is why Cato has now joined the National Federation of Independent Business on an amiscus brief in the next stage of the case before the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Sixth Court Circuit. Unfortunately, a three-judge Sixth Circuit panel agreed with the District Court that the Seventh Amendment has no force against the United States, and the Court is now weighing whether to rehear the case in bank, which means all the judges on the Court will hear the case rather than just a three-judge panel. Cato, joined by the National Federation of Independent Business and Southeastern Legal Foundation, is supporting the in-bank petition. Cato Institute is arguing that the Seventh Amendment's guarantee of a trial by jury is one of the oldest rights recognized in Anglo-American law. In the city of Monterey v. Del Monte Dunes, 1999, the Supreme Court held that because the claimants in the takings cases are seeking compensation, such claims would have been heard by a court of law rather than, say, an admiralty court or other specialized tribunal. At the same time, the Seventh Amendment was passed. Accordingly, whenever plaintiffs ask for a determination of just compensation, the right to a jury trial always attaches. Oh, yes, indeed it does. Indeed, the takings cases are exactly the sort of cases that should be resolved by a jury trial because they involve factual determinations with which members of the local community are best acquainted. Now, I'm not going to read the rest of their article, but this is extremely important. You know, I find it amusing that um, when it is convenient, uh, they mention Article Three courts, yet for years when we have been exposing that, that there is a huge difference um, in the Article Three court, you know, uh, the, the federal government would try to claim that um, they were sovereign citizens, uh, which is an oxymoron in and of itself, and we'll get into that in a different time, but they, they would claim that these people were not jobs. They didn't know what they were talking about. Well, in, and when you talk about Admiralty Court, well, you know, right here, the Cato Institute is even putting it out there. It's in their U.S. code. It's under color of law. You can check out the, the Oregon um, situation, and they even give you rules and regulations for their Admiralty um, rules. So. It is amazing to me <clears throat> to see. Uh, I am glad to hear that the Cato Institute is getting involved with this, and they hopefully will get it into an Article Three 
court. But the truth of the matter is the reason that the United States is claiming sovereign immunity, understand this, it's a corporation. Look up uh, 28 U.S. Code uh, 3002.15 A, B, and C. As a matter of fact, I'll show that to you. Give me one moment. Okay, so now we are at um, Cornell Law School. We're at 28 U.S. Code 3002. And the only reason I am showing you this is because I'm going to show you. I'm so, um, sometimes it is very frustrating that because people get confused and it was intentionally done. The United States is different than the United States of America. The United States of America is what our union was named. You can find that in the Articles of Confederation. The United States is a corporation. It is listed as a nonprofit religious corporation look it up but anyway 28 us code 3002 you can look it up you can google it i'm going to show you for yourself what i am talking about i get very tired of individuals telling me oh no 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 i absolutely um don't know what i'm talking about so let me show you what first of all court means court means any court related created by congress of the united states excluding the United States Tax Court. Okay, so let's scroll down so you can see 15A, B, and C. Well, can you please look? United States means A, a federal corporation, B, an agency, department, commission, board, or other entity of the United States or an instrumentality of the United States. So an agency, department, commission, board, or other entity of the corporation. And there you have it. This is 28 U.S. Code 3002. Here's what United States Marshal means. A United States Marshal is a deputy marshal or an official of the United States Marshal Services designated under Section 564. What does that mean? They are a deputy marshal or an official of the corporation. That's simple. Okay. So now I'm going to show you something just to show you the courts are admiralty this okay this is Oregon what does this say right here admiralty procedure US District Court District of Oregon okay so you can see this is their official site this is the the same court that Thomas Lacavere Stewart's in that Michael Emery is in um, that was sentenced yesterday. This is the court. Okay? So with that being said, what does it say? Local rules of admiralty practice and procedure. Right there. These are not constitutional courts. These are not Article Three courts. These are admiralty courts. And right here we'll show you all their rules of admiralty practice and procedure. I'll leave links in the description box below. Thank you, Cato Institute, for stepping up and uh, fighting that fight for the takings clause because this is how they are stealing the land from the people all across our union, and this is how they are trying to implement UN Agenda 21 and steal the people's land, herd people from one place to another, and kick them out of certain areas. If you have not seen the Wildlands Project map, you really need to look that up. As always, watch your backs, check your facts. Semper Fidelis, and have a wonderful night.